This is the Israeli Merkava equipped with a modular armor system that can be easily replaced when damaged. Notably, it stands as one of the few tanks with an engine positioned at the front to enhance protection. When the driver turns the steering wheel to the left, it disengages the clutch on the left track, causing it to slow down, while the right track continues to move at a constant speed. This variance in track speed results in the tank turning to the left. We will also be looking at the step-by-step -step process of firing this tank, with the gunner squeezing the trigger to fire the Lahav missile system. This missile is capable of tracking and destroying enemy's tank using a laser seeker. To ensure impartiality, we will also examine the pros and cons of this tank in this modern battlefield, so stay tuned and don't miss a beat. This formidable tank boasts an impressive length of approximately 9.04 meters, which is roughly equivalent to 29 feet. In terms of width, it spans about 3.72 meters, although when the trophy edition is taken into account, its width extends to around 4.34 meters or roughly 14.2 feet. Standing at a height of approximately 2.66 meters. To gain a better understanding of the tank's dimensions, it's helpful to compare it to a person in some iconic tanks. For reference, an average person typically stands at around 1.7 meters tall, which underscores just how imposing this tank is. When compared to other renowned armored vehicles such as the German Leopard tank, the T-90, and the highly popular Russian T-72 tank, the distinctiveness of its size and presence becomes even more evident. Let's not forget to mention the American Abrams, which uses a jet engine, and the Russian T-14 Armada tank for a more comprehensive comparison. This is one of the most unique main battle tanks as it has the ability to carry up to six infantry soldiers. Yes, you read that correctly, six infantry soldiers. Meanwhile, it maintains a crew of four, a configuration similar to other main battle tanks. This brings to a total of around 10 people in a main battle tank, which is almost similar to a Bradley fighting vehicle. Now let's examine the tank's features, starting from the front. At the forefront, you'll notice the impressive 120mm smoothbore gun. Just beside it is the coaxial machine gun, it's hidden inside this turret. Continuing further, you'll find the 50 caliber mount primarily used by the gunner for engaging infantry targets. This is the gunner's primary sight with a ballistic shield cover. Moving further towards the back, you can see the 50 caliber machine gun, which is operated by the commander. As we shift to the side, we encounter the commander independent thermal viewer. Now let's explore the interior of the tank where we find the commander weapon station. The most prominent feature here is the primary sight extension, ensuring that both the commander and the gunner share the same view. On the side, you can see the commander display unit. This is the commander control system that tracks targets using the panoramic 360 degree sights and moves as demonstrated in this animation. The animation illustrates how the commander can remotely control the turret if the gunner is injured or if there are malfunctions. The commander also has the ability to override the turret, taking control away from the gunner from their seat whenever necessary. In summary, the commander can operate the turret, search for targets, and fire the gun. Many of you have been inquiring about how we research videos leading to our small and new channel reaching 7 million views per month and 74 million total views in less than a year. Here is the secret. We use ground news to selectively curate potential content, among other resources. Similar to this video on the Israeli Merkava tank, we can see 44 total articles have been published on this story. Ground News offers a swift visual breakdown of the news between the left, center, and right institutions showing a visual biased news distribution covering a political agenda. It is also useful to know the ownership behind the news outlet, giving a better understanding of the hierarchy of information. The factuality rating helps us to pick a topic keeping it relevant and accurate. They shape our understanding of breaking news happening around the world to find common ground from different viewpoints. Ground News has really come to be a very important research tool. Go to ground.news slash AI telly. Try it out or subscribe through my link for as little as $1 a month or get 30% off unlimited access this month only. Let's take a closer look at the gunner station. This section is referred to as the gunner handle, with the two black handles serving as the primary controls. Above them, you'll find a smaller red switch, which of course is the trigger. When this switch is pressed with both safeties disabled, the result is the firing of the 120mm gun. It's important to note that the gunner can operate this set of switches on one side. When pressed and held, the gunner can rotate the turret, as demonstrated in the animation. 
These switches can also be used to elevate and depress the gun too when both of them are pressed and rotated. The result of these actions can be observed from outside the tank. When the gunner releases the switch, the gun movement stops. Located immediately adjacent to the commander is the loader's section. What is particularly intriguing is the loader's capability to choose an electrically operated revolving magazine for the type of ammunition required. The tank is equipped to house 48 rounds of ammunition, each securely stored within its protective container. An electrically operated revolving magazine is designed to accommodate 10 rounds that are readily available for immediate use. This setup serves to prevent a cook-off scenario when the tank is struck by enemy rounds. Additionally, the tank is equipped with a 60mm mortar positioned within the turret. When the situation calls for it, the operator can initiate the firing of the mortar round. When ready, the mortar can be deployed from its housing, as demonstrated in the accompanying animation. Let's take a look at how to fire this 120mm gun. Step 1. Gunners and commanders search for targets. When the gunner presses and holds this switch, the turret rotates to the direction of the target. Step 2. The loader will pick up the right ammunition as directed by the gunner or commander. Step 3. When ready, the gunner presses the trigger button and booms open fire on the 120mm gun. This is not just any shell but a missile. Yes, this is the Lahat laser homing anti-tank missile. This missile can change direction and track and destroy the enemy tank, providing a significant advantage for hitting moving targets. It can also fire French, German, and American rounds such as the Heat MPT, although it is not as accurate as the armor-piercing, fin-stabilized, discarding sabo round. When fired, the round reaches the target and detonates, creating a molten metal hypersonic jet capable of destroying or penetrating around 600 millimeters of rolled homogeneous armor. This heat round has a range of 2,600 meters or 1.6 miles. Comparing this to the fin-stabilized armor-piercing Sabo, which has a range of 3,500 meters or 2.1 miles. Let's examine the major differences between the two. Modern armor-piercing, fin-stabilized, discarding Sabo rounds are designed for one specific purpose, to destroy tanks. On the other hand, the heat round, while not the preferred choice for heavily armored main battle tanks, it might be highly effective against lightly armored vehicles. This visualization shows an armor-piercing, fin-stabilized discarding Sabo round leaves its protective casing and can potentially penetrate right through a lightly armored vehicle. This is the Merkava tank's countermeasure system, also called the Trophy. The Trophy kit extends from the side of the turret, adding nearly 1 feet or 300 millimeters to the sides. It is equipped with four radars located in the front and back. This covers a full 360-degree perimeter, using a processor and onboard computers to locate and track incoming threats. Let's see how this system works. Number 1. The radar detects and classifies incoming targets. Number 2. The system tracks threats, computes intercept parameters, and transmits alerts to the crew. Number 3. If the threat poses a danger, the countermeasure engages to neutralize it, keeping it away from the protected zone. To counter anti-armor piercing rounds, they heavily rely on a modular armor system. Inside this composite armor cross-section, space plates are sandwiched together. When damaged, the parts can be easily replaced, as shown in this animation. This includes all sides of the turret. Speaking of crew protection, they went even further by placing an engine in front of the tank, all in the interest of protecting the crew. Interestingly, this is a German V12 diesel engine rated at 1,500 horsepower. The engine compartment and one fuel tank are located at the front of the tank, with two more fuel tanks at the back. The electronically controlled transmission has five automatic forward and multiple reverse gears for ease of operations. Just a reminder, the Israeli Merkava is one of the few tanks that have front-drive sprockets because of the forward placement of the engine. Now let's focus on the operation of the tank. These are the controls used for maneuvering. Moving forward, you'll find the accelerator and the brake, which function similarly to those in a car. To set the tank in motion, the driver uses the accelerator. To bring the tank to a halt or decrease its speed, the driver applies the brake pedal. Here comes the intriguing part, the steering. Using these controls will turn the tank either to the left or the right. When the driver turns this steering to the left, it disengages the clutch on the left track, causing it to slow down, while the right track continues to move at a constant speed. This variance in track speed results in the tank turning to the left. 
The same principle applies when turning the tank to the right. The driver turns the steering just like this animation. This action disengages the clutch on the right track, causing it to slow down. While the left track maintains a constant speed, thus turning the tank to the right. This engine can power the tank to speed of up to 64 to 70 kilometers per hour, which translates to around 43 miles per hour. That's an impressive speed for a main battle tank weighing 64 tons that can carry six infantry soldiers as discussed earlier. Like any military vehicle, it has its share of pros and cons. One of the defining features of the Merkava is its emphasis on crew safety. Furthermore, it is equipped with a soft kill countermeasure system situated at the front of the turret. When a laser homing missile is fired at the tank, this system disperses smoke grenades, confusing or blinding the laser homing device of the missile, potentially causing it to malfunction or deviate from its intended path. Let's take a look at the cons. Despite its trophy countermeasure system, it does have its flaws. In this modern battlefield in the age of drum warfare, a simple $300 drum attacks with a mortar round can damage this $5 million tank when hit from the top of the turret. Placing the engine at the front creates a significant heat signature, making it a potential target for laser homing missiles. We create original videos from scratch, and with the support of our sponsor, Ground News, we are able to produce basic engineering videos like these and hire more animators. So please subscribe and click the notification bell to receive more videos in the future.